Okay, we've got another great show planned for everyone today. We are going to be speaking to my friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Ablo. He is a graduate of Brown University and then Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. He is a psychiatrist and founder of Pain to Power, a coaching program. He's authored many books. And after I finish up with Dr. Ablo, we are going to bring Jennifer Say back. Uh, she, of course, was the brand manager. I think I'm getting that right. I, I think I got that wrong last time for Levi Strauss. And uh, she was a chief marketing officer and then global brand president. There you go, in 2022. Asked to resign because of some, God forbid, opposition to school closure. And that that is looking better and better and better in the prism of history, the, through these uh, lens of history, standing up to that nonsense. But uh, here we are. Uh, Keith Ablo is at keithablo.com, paintapower.com, theablocenter.com, Keith Ablo on Twitter. We're going to get to him right after this. Our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Let's talk about aging because everyone wants to know how to slow it down. For almost a decade, I've been taking a healthy aging supplement called True Niagen. This supplement boosts NAD. That's something that cells can't live without. It's done with a patented form of nicotinamide riboside called NR or Niagen. It's more efficient and more scientifically reviewed than NMN or other NAD boosters. True Niagen is truly the best way to boost NAD levels. And it's made by Chromadex. They're the gold standard in the NAD space. Dr. Charles Brenner, the scientist who discovered the NAD boosting potential of NR, explains. And the center of the metabolism that allows the conversion of food into energy is NAD coenzymes. And NAD gets disturbed um, in the aging process. And as we're exposed to conditions of metabolic stress, mm. niagen, which is the... Um, form of, of NR that was developed by Chromadex is the, is the best and the only fully legal form of NR. And this is really the gold standard for NAD boosting uh, vitamins. I love this product. I urge you to try it. Go to drdrew.com slash trueniagen for 20% off your order. That is drdrew.com slash trueniagen, T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N, and enter Dr. Drew at checkout, D-R-D-R-E-W, and are at the checkout for 20% off. You asked for it, and the wellness company has delivered. The medical emergency kit, replete with ivermectin, prescription antibiotics, and more, continues to fly off the shelves. We keep one here at home. And there are three new kits you need to know about, and more are coming. The Contagion emergency kit was inspired by the high demand for the medical kits. In that Contagion kit, you'll find ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, antibiotics, budesonide, and a nebulizer. And a must for your next trip is the travel emergency kit, something I made sure exactly what I give my patients is in this kit and some more. The kit includes remedies for jet lag, variety of infections, even GI ailments. Imagine your flight getting grounded anywhere, say even in the US, and you start getting sick. You do not want to be at the mercy of the US healthcare system or any healthcare system. At home, we keep the ultimate first aid kit on hand. It has over 20 essential supplies and medications for situations when time is of the essence. Order one for your car and your go bag. Because these kits contain prescriptions, your purchase includes a telemedicine consultation as well as an instruction manual. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off all your orders. I'm very excited about these kits. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC. We appreciate you supporting the people that support us. We really are very excited about some of the products we're able to represent and, and uh, bring to you here. So thank you for that. And also, I think I'm going to just hint at, um, I've been enamored by the show Talking Dead, you know, a show, post-show, after a show. Look out for something like that right here. We'll give you details soon. Just tell Dr. everybody your ideas so that I don't have to be the only one who knows about it. 
So you don't speak about it elsewhere. So uh, <laughs> my plan is my plan is to have a post show on locals uh, for for a, just a full free speech free for all, whatever people want to talk about and say. I, I would be interested in hearing your thoughts about the guest I've just interviewed, just to hear your just to get your opinions. Um, but I feel like we need to create environments where it is just simply free, free for people to speak their mind. And that's that. Uh, and that's hard to develop and hard to create and hard to find and hard to, to, um, protect. But, uh, that's my goal. We're, that's sort of what we're doing here, generally speaking. But I, it occurred to me this morning that there might be a way to do it where we have a sort of a, a premium version of where you can really, where I can speak my mind too, frankly, and not think about things that, uh, I worry about. <laughs> speaking of worrying, maybe Dr. Ablo can help me with that. He is a psychiatrist, been in practice for 25 years. Uh, he's from John Hopkins. Uh, Pain to Power is the new is his program. I think I sent you. I gave you all of his particulars. Keith Ablo on X. A B L Ablo. A B L O. I pronounce his name like it's Abalo. I'm sorry for that. It's not like Abalone. It's Ablo. There's the book. Let's bring that up again, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, the AbloCenter.com. Ah, there we go. There's another book you should check out. Twenty five lessons. I'll get him to talk about that. Please welcome Keith Ablo. Hey, Drew, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. I'll give you a chance to first talk about the book. What, what are we going to learn with the book, the Trump, Trump book? Well, you know, I wrote Trump Your Life with Christian Josie, my co-author, a forward by Roger Stone. And, and why? Because years back, I wrote a blog for foxnews.com, and I suggested that uh, Donald Trump, multi-billionaire, successful businessman, Emmy Award-winning television personality, president of the United States, that there were three uh, characteristics of the president that might be worth emulating. And it mm. caused an outrage. You had Yahoo.com putting that on as its lead story on the front page of Yahoo.com saying, can you believe this shrink? He thinks there's something to emulate about the president or to absorb from his style and his uh, way of being. They thought that was ridiculous. Uh, so naturally, me being me, I had to write a book with 25 <laughs> characteristics of the president um, because I, listen, I think we're witnessing kind of like the biggest free of charge self-help seminar the world has ever known. Uh, we're watching a man who can perform despite innumerable obstacles put in his way, very unfair obstacles ranging from state to federal courts to all manner of accusations. And the guy just keeps on going, how does he do it? And how did he achieve some of the things he achieved as president? Um, it's it's reproducible. You can actually learn from it. So I wrote Trump Your Life. It's like the playbook to the biggest self-help seminar we're going to ever see, which is Donald Trump uh, continuing on in his campaign to be president of the United States again. It is incredible how he marches through adversity. Uh, I, I I gave a talk at the White House. I'll go to any White House that wants help. I, I will show up and I will give a talk if that's what they want. And I did. And uh, he sh came in in the middle at, after I spoke. I, he was not planned. And so afterwards, I had a chance to chat with him for a second. It was during like the second impeachment trial. And I said, are you okay? How do you tolerate this? He's like, I don't even think about it. And I was like, wow, I, I can't, that's not me. I can't do that. So what is that? Well, I think, um, first of all, that's not me either, Drew. I mean, certainly, right? Uh, but we can aspire to be able to see our lives in context and be able to look at them a bit askance, I like to say, and say, I wonder why this is happening. And I really don't know where it's going. Even the most challenging things uh, are a gym for the mind. If you want to think about it that way, and I know you do, but anybody who's watching or listening can as well say, well, I guess if nothing else, if I equip myself well in these circumstances, these incredibly challenging circumstances, I will get stronger. Uh, and I also, True. because I have it, faith, it, uh, would say, while you're getting stronger, also notice the fact that you really don't know why, and I think there is a why, I think there's a kind of universe uh, or God is programming things to an extent. There is a reason why these things are happening. And if you can kind of say, I wonder what's going to happen to the good from this, 
stay alert even in the midst of darkness for very bright light where you might be able to say what you feel or change people's minds or simply demonstrate through your strength that other people don't need to cower um, and that we really, we humans really are able to summon extraordinary resilience in the face of adversity. It, it is extraordinary. I, you know, I, I, I'm hearkening back to the beginning of the first Trump presidency. And there was a lot of, if you remember, a lot of pejorative um, pronouncements about his personality construct and his uh, whatever, you know, biases he had or whatever. Um, and I remember at the time um, telling people that be, be very careful with pejorative uh, assessments of naturally occurring differences in the human psyche. You know what I mean? Uh, and and what I and I what, what I would what I would do back then is describe to them a couple of other presidents and ask them if that person should have been president. Of course, they say no. Maybe I was had my finger on the scale a little bit when I would describe it. But you know, Lincoln was severely depressed, maybe bipolar. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was so narcissistic and man manic all the hypomanic all the time, and and great presidents. And by the way, if you're a fighter pilot, I want that to guy to have a alcoholic genetics and be narcissistic. That's who I want flying the plane, the F-17. Perfect. So this idea, I, I just wonder if you feel as strong as I do, because you and I are, you know, we work in a world where terms are thrown around a lot and the terms have liability. Like it's, yes, if you have a severe narcissist, it's going to be tough to have an intimate relationship with them. And it's going to be hard. Uh, but the pejorative nature in all settings with which we use psychiatric terms really bothers me. I couldn't agree more, uh, and I've been fond of saying, if God forbid, knocking on wood, uh, I needed neurosurgery. You know, that's right. I, I'd like my neurosurgeon to have a healthy ego. Um, I don't <laughs> want him to be so. Maybe ego not. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, no, he could be so egotistical. You don't want him to have bad judgment that he's so egotistical. But exactly. I'll, I'll give him as much as he needs, whatever that is. <laughs> and I really yeah. want that person to be. I, I'm not going to trade away affability. I'm not going to say, give me an affable neurosurgeon. I'd like a warm guy. No, no, no. I want somebody no. who's going to get every cell that's malignant because he's obsessive. That's right. He thinks he's right. you know, empowered by by the Lord, whatever it is. I think it's wonderful. I want that guy. And, you know, Donald Trump, you can learn a lot from him. For instance, if nothing else, you might learn that if you're trying to do things in the world that you believe are worthwhile and that I happen to believe are good things to do, you're not going to encounter less resistance. You're going to mm -hmm. encounter more resistance. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be prepared, be prepared for that and accept it and embrace it. Even I think Donald Trump embraces the fact that what he's attempting to do is very difficult. And he would have predicted, I am sure this is not going to be easy. It's going to be tremendous headwinds uh, in life, by the way. Isn't that true of so many things? You've been a pioneer, a trailblazer, and getting people to talk about their relationships. And I doubt you would say, listen, if you're embarking upon a marriage, expect it to be easy. Uh, no, there'll be headwinds, um, but your relationship could get stronger as you navigate them. Uh, Donald Trump, you know, has a lot to recommend him, and we can learn a lot, 25 things at least, but I could write a sequel. Um, uh, that make people well, stronger. Uh, there's a, there's an op might be an opportunity there. So so I, I want to switch off him and talk about not really the collective, but but you and I, I you and I haven't talked since things got kind of crazy, and, and I'm just wondering if you what your thoughts are on where what happened to us. One of my theories is we've had a big. Uh, load of destroyed families and childhood traumas and all kinds of substances and things that have happened and neglected mental health issues and whatnot. Is, is that sufficient to explain our present moment or what do you imagine is happening? I think those are tremendously important factors. I think also that the dawn of technology and its growth 
uh, has left people without their bearings. Uh, it hasn't been looked at. What does it mean that you can fictionalize your existence through a Facebook profile? What did secondlife.com, when that was launched, where you could create a whole other avatar and assign a role to it? You know, you had folks in that those early days at secondlife.com. Now everybody's living secondlife.com, it seems. But in those early days, you had people who were getting divorced in real life because their avatars had an affair on secondlife.com. Now, that's, mm. that's confusing. But one could have seen that as the leading edge of a kind of pandemic in which people lost their grounding in reality and they were able to port themselves into the Internet, much like um, Marshall McClellan uh, you know, um, warned about um, when he the wrote media. Understanding Media. Uh, he said, look, there yep. are cold media. Um, he talked about television. Um, as opposed to film, that people had to assemble the pixels with their own minds and therefore it absorbed people. And he said it can cause wars. We want to we want to reassert ourselves, our tribal nature, because we're being homogenized by TV. He would have absolutely uh, said this is a hundred X. So I think yeah. that people it's yeah. a drug and um, people are worried, I think, to their core. Uh, about being removed from themselves at the same time as they're flocking to do it. Um, and so it really does. I mean, I think um, the collective impact of technology leaves you saying, well, maybe I can be anything. I can alter my appearance. I can have a second kind of life. I can depict myself on Facebook in any way I would like. I can have a million Facebook friends. Well, no, you don't. Uh, if you have a few good friends in real life, that's really something. But we don't know what it means to have Facebook friends who won't necessarily turn up for you. Uh, and I think that because of that, people are losing their tether to reality. The transgender stuff yeah. would be seen as the most dramatic element of that, where you have people literally saying, "I, despite my anatomy and my DNA, I am not the gender that I was born, period. Um, well, that could be seen, as I do, as sort of a, an epidemic of psychosis. Well, it's certainly, you know, I, I, the one thing I have seen is hysteria that I didn't expect. Uh, I, you know, his, I, I, I saw the narcissism coming, but the, the histrionic component caught me off guard. Uh, do you have any thoughts about the, how hysterical we have been? Is it just the, a good job of the government and the media whipping us into hysteria, or were we prone to hysteria for some reason? Uh, probably human beings have the capacity uh, for hysteria and uh, being carried away by your emotions. But as you cut the truth at its roots, um, you get into potential hysteria because really your emotions are then free floating. So it doesn't matter what you demonstrate about COVID. Uh, you're going to become overheated and with fear and you'll be manipulatable. Uh, this WHO pact, by the way, that's being suggested where we give all kinds of control to the WHO if there's another pandemic is basically saying, listen, you don't need to be anchored in yourself at all. Countries don't need to. Um, you're really going to be hysterical in the face of any threat. And you're going to need a central authority to turn to because you can't rely on yourself. You can't rely even on your government. After all, I mean, talk about delusions. We're living in a country where the leader of our country says, says through his actions, we don't need borders. Okay, well, it's a hop, skip, and a jump from I know these folks that I believe if you do, and I don't, uh, are the opposite gender from their anatomy to, well, why are you saying that there should be borders based on what? Well, based on the definition of a country. Well, now we hate you. So we move from, from fiction to hysteria, deep hatred, 
uh, at at others who have different viewpoints. And then the whole cancellation thing that follows that, I'm going to kill you metaphorically. I will destroy you on Google such that you will not be able to work. You won't be able to have friends. Uh, and that's where we're at. And, and this has happened in history before. This is the thing. I, it, I, I kind of was predicting it, uh, scapegoating. Scapegoating to me is what... Ma, you know, I didn't. I didn't know about social media when I started speculating about this. But the, the, this is a perfect environment for mobs to form, and then to act out the collective scapegoating mechanism uh, on one or the other. And and it's very uh, effective way to deal with narcissistic rage and borderline. All the cluster B rages uh, gets acted out and regulated this way rather than turned on one another. Uh, and and history is replete with examples of this. Whether you go to the pre-revolutionary France or whether you go to early 20th mm. century Russia or mid 20th century Germany. I mean, it's just over and over and over again. The thing that people are missing is that when you start scapegoating, eventually you get scapegoated. <laughs> In other words, you, you build you build so much hatred and resentment going back and forth that that if you put somebody on the guillotine, eventually you're going on the guillotine. And that because we don't teach history, uh, people are missing that. Well, you're already on. You're already the Walking Dead is part of the problem. Um, the, very often, I think the people in hysterics and those who would cancel others and destroy them uh, are essentially vampires. So they have ceded mm. their core to the state already. They've given up mm. all their connection to reality. They are emptied out now. You know, one of the strengths of psychiatry is that you can help people be themselves again you can help them be sort of reborn and in, in what was intended for them uh and with their core talents and their real real opinions about others in their lives and the whole world around them but i think what we've got is we've got an incredible number of people who are no longer connected to self so we think we could think of them as vampires and they're coming for you um, because mm -hmm. your personhood is offensive to them what are they trying to kill? The First Amendment. You shouldn't be able to speak your mind. Why? Because it's, it's a sign you're alive, which is offensive to us. You shouldn't be able to defend your home or your family with a firearm, even if you've committed no crime. Why? Well, because that's taking things into your own hands. That's expressing yourself and uh, your bravery and your courage. We must stop that. You cannot express that. We're going to come for you. And if you have a, an opinion contrary to ours, uh, that's perhaps uh, extreme even, maybe it's quite not extreme, maybe it's simply decided, a decided opinion, that will offend so many people at this point. Uh, the whole Ayn Rand idea that the man in the middle is the problem, that you have to be for or against many things in life, that's for those folks the pandemic but they want everyone to die who believes that metaphorically at least perhaps yeah. really yeah boy it's a great <laughs> metaphor though the, the the zombie is a you know the the zombie or the uh, the vampire and it's interesting isn't it interesting how preoccupied we've become with these things lately on television and elsewhere in the movies and whatnot that's very interesting to me i'm, I'm gonna I mean, that's going to stay with me. I'm going to be thinking about that for a while. I have to take a break in a minute, but before we do, um, you've been speaking lately about uh, federal agents raiding your office. Uh, and I don't know to what extent you can talk about this or what and how it harkens back to your patient and whether I, I, I'm confused by the whole story. You can imagine. Can you give us a sketch of what, what, what that was? What's that? Well, no. Sure. Oh, you're I said, confused I'm, too. Yeah, I'm confused yeah. too. I yeah. was hoping you could help yeah. me. Uh, no, so maybe going let's back, hear it. Go, so going back now to 2019, um, my assistant got a call that somebody would like to come in and see me uh, for some life coaching. Fair enough. Someone came in, but it wasn't a client. It was the DEA armed agents uh, who took many things from the office. Um, all computers, cell phones, new and old uh, records, uh, my business records that they simply sort of inhaled like a vacuum 
that weren't on the list to take, but nonetheless, it's okay. It's not. Who, but, whose list? Where the list? Who? Who was it? The Department of Justice, or where did the list come from? Sure, they had a search warrant, but I don't know that. I don't know what they told the judge to get said search warrant. Um, huh. And you know, my own therapy notes on my own therapy. I have a. I had a great therapist at the time, by the way, and he would have me dialogue with myself. Great technique, sort of a Jungian technique, um, and you know, grab that too. Um, certainly not on any list of things to take. Um, and I've committed no crime. I won't be charged with a crime, God willing. I'm knocking on wood. Um, but what it certainly familiarized me with, what it brought home in a very powerful way, um, is that the government doesn't need a very good reason to descend upon your home or office. They do it. Um, and once they do it and start looking at your entire life, my learning curve here has been that anybody uh, might have done something that they can uh, assail you with. For instance, did you know, because I didn't, that you can be fined thousands of dollars per prescription that you didn't put a patient address on? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never heard that. You, is that in all states? Uh, yes, it is. It's federal thankfully, law. Thankfully, I got to say, thankfully, thankfully, now we're doing it electronically, so it does appear on the electronic record, but uh, never heard that before. For 40 never, years of practicing uh, medicine. Exactly. And I never had a doctor say to me, hey, Keith, before I make out this prescription, yeah. what would your address yeah. again? Who has time? Yeah, but, Wait, but not only that, there's, no, there's nowhere on the form. Where on the form is there an address? I mean, the address is in the record. If the pharmacy needs it, we give it to them. Or you might call the pharmacy and do a verbal, uh, you know, order. And I've never been asked, hey, what's the patient's address? Unless it's Jim Smith. And they're like, well, we got to figure out which Jim Smith from Keith Ablo is being treated here. So, but it turns out that if they choose to identify a particular physician, you might have written say a thousand prescriptions and you might be threatened with a fine for $5 million for addresses. Crazy. So the question is, if they don't like you, if you've expressed opinions that don't jive with an administration or a zeitgeist in the world, or maybe you championed ketamine like me uh, as a treatment for depression before anyone did and you know, really championed it. I was really out there. Or maybe you were the first one like me in 2011 to say, don't let your kids watch Chaz Bono on Dancing with the Stars. It really could affect them to want to emulate someone who I felt wasn't well. That's just my take. I, I didn't think that that was a uh, sane uh, uh, approach um, to underlying psychological conflict. Um, so I said that on national television, listen, don't let your kids watch. I, I haven't been shy. I've made friends and enemies. I think that speaking your mind is a good way to remind yourself that you're alive and you'll attract uh, detractors. Um, but that's one thing I've learned is I don't know why they were here. Um, I don't think they should have been here. And I've also learned that once they come, if you haven't put periods at the ends of sentences, you're a vulnerable person. Um, yeah. But God help all of us then, because the FBI, CIA, DEA, and any other federal agency or IRS, as Ben Carson pointed out at the prayer breakfast years ago, he said, listen, if I wanted to get you or you or you, he pointed to people in the audience, I could get you um, based on some rule. So the selectivity of who they go after becomes a kind of sort of Damocles that can be wielded against you. So I don't know if that clarifies really anything, um, but well, uh, I, I, I'm going to ask you more about it. I wanna, I've, yeah, it's the beginning of a story, exactly. And and I it reminds me of the, this this feature you're talking about reminds me of what being in a malpractice suit is like. They they can always find something, you know, some something you didn't 
something. Who knows? I mean, it's just because there's so much documentation and you always forget to put something down or something gets put down that we didn't have or something. There's always something. And uh, and that's how they get you is with the, the documents. They'll just go until they find something. And, you know, and language being powerful, that's how they get you. Now I listen, you know, I always did as a psychiatrist, but you can't get me. You can do lots of things to me. You can cause me a lot of pain. I'm not invulnerable, um, but I'm not available to be gotten. And that's where I think Americans need to go to that core where you say, listen, I, you may make me bleed, but you can't take my soul. Um it can be very uncomfortable, well, believe me. But in the end, if you have the opinion, yeah, but I don't surrender my core. I just don't do it. So go for it. Um, then uh, it's hard to be defeated in a final way. And Donald Trump is that guy, by the way. That's why I say he's the best self-help course. You're not going to defeat Donald Trump. He's going to keep coming. So uh, Ryan Holiday, who's become a very uh, well-known advocate of Stoic philosophy, was a college student when I first met him. And he said, uh, what are you reading? It was a totally unrelated to anything in philosophy. And I said, well, look, I read crazy stuff. And he goes, what are you reading? I go, there's this Stoic philosopher named Epictetus. I'm reading the Enchiridion. And this is Epictetus' main point. You can enslave me. You can break my limbs. You cannot... I, oh, I choose what happens to me inside. And uh, that, that is that philosophy that has very great uh, pertinence in the present moment for a lot of us. Uh, Keith Ablo is here with me. Paintopower.com is where I want you to go. I have to take a little break. Let's throw the book up there again, uh, Caleb, so people will go out and get the book. It is the Trump Your Life book, Keith Ablo and Christian Josie. And we will be back right after this. You could spend thousands of dollars and dozens of hours trying to look a few years younger, or you can skip all that and the hassle and go with what works, GenuCell Skin Care. GenuCell is the secret to better skin. Their products are made in the USA using a proprietary technology that combines a naturally effective base with non-GMO ingredients. In fact, you might have witnessed the astonishing effects of GenuCell during a recent unplanned moment of our show. When just a little GenuCell XV restored my skin within minutes right before your eyes. That is how fast these products work. I know I'm a snob about the products I use on my face. Everybody knows it. Every time I go to the dermatologist's office, they're just rows and rows of different creams. Retinols, vitamin C cream, under eye cream, night creams. Scrubs. And then when I get to the counter, they're overpriced. All kinds of products that you can all find at GenuCell.com. Susan and I love GenuCell so much, we've created our own bundle so you can try our favorite anti-wrinkle creams, correcting serums, under eye treatments. Say goodbye to those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, skin redness, even those dark under eye bags. Women and men of all skin types, GenuCell has got you covered. Order right now at GenuCell.com slash Drew to save 50%, actually over 50%, and you'll get a free luxury spa box plus free shipping. That is genucel.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash D-R-E-W. Susan has talked about how she has been struggling with thinning hair and using Provia. I'm so happy because Provia is helping me grow longer, stronger, and shinier hair, especially up on top. Thank you, Provia. A reminder that Provia uses a safe natural ingredient called Procapo. It effectively targets the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. Scalp circulation the delivery of nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to the scalp. Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. And right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping on Provia's introductory package at proviahair.com slash Drew. Every package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. And every order includes your choice of a free gift. Provia works, guaranteed, or 100% of your money back. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at proviahair.com slash Drew. Not Dr. Drew, just Drew. That is P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R dot com slash Drew. We all know the value of a good night's sleep. We feel better, look better, have more energy to spare. But you could be missing out on all of those benefits if you're sleeping on sheets that are too hot or too cold or just plain uncomfortable. I have the solution. 
Cozy Earth Bedding. Cozy Earth is the softest and most comfortable sheets, blankets, loungewear, and more. They use premium viscose from highly sustainable bamboo, and we sleep in them regularly. I wear their t-shirts. Susan wears their pajamas. Cozy Earth Bedding comes with a 100-night sleep trial, which means you have up to 100 nights to sleep on them, wash them, try them out. If you're not in love, just return them within 100 days for a full refund. Susan and I love them. In fact, we have Cozy Earth sheets on our bed right now, and they made a huge difference in our sleep. If you've never tried Cozy Earth, we have some awesome news. You can save up to 35% off Cozy Earth right now. But hurry, this offer will not last. Go to CozyEarth.com, enter my promo code DREW at checkout for up to 35% off on your first order. That is CozyEarth.com, promo code DREW, C-O-Z-Y-E-A-R-T-H, CozyEarth.com, code D-R-E-W. Uh... Jennifer Say in here in just a couple of minutes. She has a new clothing line. Uh, she, of course, uh, harkens from the, the clothing business. Uh, to, right now, it is Keith Abloh. He was talking to us about uh, a raid of his office, which is just astonishing to me. Uh, and and have you have you found out? Have they told you what they were up to, what they were looking for, or wh where this came from? Uh, no. You know, one of the uh, um, puzzles about such a, a day uh, is that it goes on for many years, potentially. So uh, they don't ever say, hey, this was our motivation. Um, unless there's litigation, in fact, you can't look at whatever document they provided to a court or whatever testimony they gave in front of a court to get a search warrant. That's only if the thing becomes litigation. And hopefully that won't happen. Um, and so, uh, no, you don't know why they were there. I mean, I had had a disgruntled employee who, by the way, I went to court with. She said she was harassed. I won. Um, mm -hmm. But once those kinds of things go into the newspaper and once they're talked about at the Board of Registration of Medicine or uh, in federal, always, you just don't know what was it right before that. By the way, my guns were confiscated. That's before the raid. Because the same employee, or probably because of that, said I didn't store them correctly. So based on rumor and innuendo by somebody that lost in court um, and was roundly criticized by the judge, based on that, they came for the guns first. Um, so I'll need to get those back eventually. And was I... Did I get this right? Some I don't know if this is rumor or what that Hunter Biden's story folds into your life somehow. Well, one of the things that the federal government took when they raided my cottage, my office cottage, was in fact a laptop of Hunter Biden's. Now I'm not breaking confidence here because it's been covered in the media that the DEA did take Hunter Biden's laptop. In fact, wrongly, Hunter Biden's attorney and friend and benefactor said, you know, Keith Abloh was the source of the laptop. He must have given it to the computer repairman in Delaware. No, Hunter left the laptop at my office when he came here for help um, and came for treatment. And again, I'm not breaking confidence because it's been covered in the media because uh, the texts were released from his laptop, not by me, by mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was clear, oh, Keith Abloh was treating Hunter Biden. Yes, that's true. Um, and so one of the things swept up in my office was Hunter Biden's laptop by the federal think that's government. What they were, do you think maybe that's what they were going for? I, you know, I, I won't even theorize. Um, I can yeah. tell you this um, immediately because patient confidentiality to me trumps most everything. Um, yes. I had my lawyer contact the feds and say, listen, one of the laptops is not looking like the others because it's a, it's dirty and it has stickers on it. Uh, it's quite different than Keith's. Uh, and uh, that is not Keith's. And the client's lawyer will be in touch with you uh, who does own that laptop. And my understanding is that resulted in it being returned to Hunter Biden. Oh, Okay, that's fair enough. Did did he did he just leave laptops? He walked around with laptops and sort of when he was not doing well, forget them places. Is that his thing? Do, I wonder, how did you? What were you thinking? Did you did you want to give it back to him all that time and he just never came around for it? Or uh, yeah, you really we're yeah. getting into yeah the area here that we can't talk about. 
But oh. it just it's just so uh, odd to me. The guy leaves Sleuth laptops. detective Drew Pinsky. Well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, try to give it you want to be very careful. Okay, fair enough. You, that's yeah, already try to give it it's back. weird once it, it's it's so interesting and weird once a patient divulges publicly that they've been in treatment. However, that happens. Then you know, simple questions like that become like I, I, mean, I could talk. I, I don't know. You know, it's I. I want him to know. Uh, uh, so and and well, you had it in a secure spot, right? You kept it. You kept it like it was a patient. It was patients of personal belongings it just got left there. Yeah, everything was locked up. Um, so his laptop was um, uh, some you know very fine clothes which fit me, but uh, no, I didn't try them on. But we're the same size. Um, so I had said to him, and this is not breaking confidence. I had said, listen, you know, pick it up or I'm keeping the clothing because I would never spend that. <laughs> um, so, uh, but none of it got picked up. So there you have it. And it got swept up by the DEA um, uh, in this raid. Um, the only other thing I can think of, I mean, that I know irked the DEA is I had prescription art. I had a bad conversation once with a DEA agent because I make large prescriptions that say, I hope, iconic things about our culture. And it had my DEA number on it because it's literally a oh, blow goodness. up my prescription. Yeah. And they called and they yeah. said, look, it's legal, but we'd rather you not do it. And I said, well, it's kind of part of the art. I don't know if that irked. That doesn't seem to equal a raid to me. Uh, factors, I don't know about the laptop my disgruntled and defeated uh, ex-assistant. Um, but I can tell you this, uh, I never broke a law. Um, I never dealt a drug to anyone. There's no reason. I think some of these things are like they say about the Kennedy assassination. You never had to issue an order to one specific person necessarily. It's this one stands down. This one appears in the wrong place. It happens by unconscious choreography without actual mm. words being spoken. I'm not well liked in Massachusetts by more than half the people because I'm an unapologetic conservative. And, uh, mm. you know, and I think that matters. I do. I think it matters. Um, and I think it's not uh, it's not nothing that they came to this door as opposed to someone else's. There, there. That was a time when they were going after a lot of doctors who prescribed opiates for willy nilly reasons. Some ah. appropriate, some inappropriate, uh, and e even even opiate treatment like Suboxone and things like that. Uh, and you know, obviously, they've flipped that on its head now, and now it's it's very weird the way they go about these things. Well, the bureaucracy. Go ahead. Let me get in more trouble. Uh, we don't know the first thing really about the power of opiates, for instance, in some cases of intractable depression to save lives, right? There's a book called The Opiate Cure, and I don't think anybody should try opiates. If anyone's listening, don't try them, don't go there. But, you know, we keep learning that ketamine saves lives in depression, that microdosing LSD might be helpful. Uh, and then there are these sacred cows where if you ever said, I wonder if you're at, if you're at the edge of the earth and you might die from depression, uh, is it possible that you're opiate deficient, that your endorphins and enkephalins are literally at a lower level than can sustain your life in terms of your mood uh, and your depression? Uh, yeah, sure, that's possible. Are we going to study it? Well, not until... There's the same kind of effort behind, say, opiates to look at them, but they're the demon now, as was placed on ketamine and psilocybin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And now, uh, you know, others are coming down the pike. And I, I think that people are people, the regulators are at least uh, parsing out the kappa opioid receptor system from the mu opioid receptor system and becoming willing to look at that. And man, and that has been very, very, very helpful. <laughs> it has been very, and, and the you know, National Center of Drug Abuse has been very enthusiastic about this. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to kind of do what's appropriate in letting doctors do their job. But but I've got to, I've got to bring Jennifer Say in here in a minute. But before I do, I just want to ask you about 
you know, the, to me, one of the, the COVID revealed so much, right? I mean, I mean, things I didn't realize were underway in terms of so many of our peers being employees, so many of our peers willing to stand down in terms of their uh, their sacred obligation for patients in terms of follow up and trying things and improvising and doing what they needed to do to help someone. I mean, this was shocking to me. But the but the 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 seemed like the the culprit one of the big culprits and there were many in all of this was the bureaucratization and the centralization of our profession. To me, and and I was just I've been studying history lately, and that tension between decentralization and centralization has been in play since the French Revolution. Uh, the the and what people don't know is, by the way, the Jacobins were the first the original. Um, totalitarians essentially were taking a page from mm. their monarch the monarchs had developed the administrative state they just wanted the administrative state to be run wow. expanded and run by the people and then of course we have a revolution and the decentralization has always been a better way to go and america worked their own frenchman came to america and you know de tocqueville came here and said why does it work in america because democracy is decentralized and it's practiced locally that's why it works and yet our profession where the sacred unit of the patient and the physician is your most effective unit is being completely encumbered by bureaucracy and centralization. I just want to get your thoughts on that before I let you go. I think it's being decimated. Um, I think that the sacred uh, bond between physician and patient and the physician's ability to use things uh, off-label, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. useful things, um, uh, is being encroached upon. So I agree with you 100%. By the way, you can take that, what you just said, uh, Drew, is true even of Bitcoin. Why is it powerful, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency? Because it's decentralized. That's why it has the power that it does. Yes, that's why America has 50 states and why it, it too is stronger than it would be with 10 states or five or one. And it's why the WHO shouldn't be messing with America's response to the next, as they say, you know, disease X, which makes you think, man, what do they have in store for us next? That's, that's exactly right. I completely agree. One last question. Um, I didn't know where you grew up, but I heard the word oot came out of your mouth a couple of times. <laughs> Are, were you from the Pacific, uh, the uh, Northern, Northern Plains or Canada or where did that come from? Uh, no, you know, I grew up in Marblehead, Massachusetts. I dated a Canadian girl for years, uh, and I think oh. this is the remnant. Of, that's <laughs> all fault. I have left. I have a broken heart and the word out. And I have a question. What, I have my own question for you, which is why wouldn't Drew Pinsky be running for governor of California? Well, it, um, for Senate. Mrs. Pinsky, why don't you, why don't you explain that? It, it, was, it was discussed a few times. Uh, Mrs. Pinsky? He needs a new wife for that. <laughs> she, she, uh, we, we, we started looking it. into it. Uh, I was looking at going after She needs Schiff's to marry Catherine position. Barger, and then maybe it'll work I out. Was, <laughs> I was uh, looking at, I talked to a former governor about, and he was very encouraging, which was shocking to me. Uh, and then I, I have prostate cancer. I needed some radiation. That was enough of an excuse to to uh, put me out for that particular round. But and then Susan looked at it more carefully. and was like, you can't. No. Look what Doctor Oz went through. I That's mean, what she looked at and thought. I, I don't want you to go through that. And and we we know him. He very had some well. money to kill too. Right. Right. I don't know. So Draft there you go. Drew .com has a certain ring to it. Draftdrew.com. <laughs> I may get that <laughs> URL. Start some trouble. Fair enough. It, but I'll tell you why I was thinking about it. It was when I, at the time, I was like, we, we got to do something. I mean, somebody's got to do something. This is craziness. I, I, it was so out of control in California in particular. I was like, we, I just have to do something. Uh, my something right now is this. We're doing this. We're talking to people like you. We're, we're raising awareness. And I, I really feel very good about uh, the environment we're creating here. And I thank you for being a part of it. And hopefully we'll see you soon. If I'm out in Boston, I'm going to, I'm going to, or if you're down in New York, let me know. We should get together soon. I'm great. Thanks, brother. All right. You got it, man. Uh, Pain to Power is where he wants you to go. The book is uh, The Trump Factor. Did I get the name right? Caleb, put that up again, if you don't mind. Uh, they're Trump of your life. Trump of your life. Uh, it's interesting. I turned that into The Trump Factor. I bet he thought about that as a name, and it probably was already taken somewhere. Uh, I, at this point, want to switch gears, and we're going to bring our friend Jennifer Say in. Let me get you her particulars, if you give me just a second here. Oh, Caleb, where is your note to me? It just, did I throw it away? 
Let's uh, put put up her. Uh, I don't have it all of a sudden. Um, can you put up her uh, her stuff? That it's yeah, uh, it uh, you know uh, ex. Yeah. The, 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 the How weird. Quick and, quick and easy bio is this amazing woman turned down millions of dollars ah, to stick is. to her principles. That's the short version of her right. story, and well, now she's short, expanding right, on that and, brand of sticking with her principles. And, that's right. And she was essentially raising an issue that was turned out to be categorically, I would say, not only correct, but probably the most important issue in the pandemic that was miscarried profoundly by our government, that was harmful on a level that could not be measured by the deaths, not even approximating the number of deaths from the pandemic in terms of the impact on what they did in closing schools. You can get Jennifer at Jennifer Say, S-E-Y. Instagram, XX underscore XY Athletics. Or, um, that's a hint at her new pro, uh, uh, clothing line. XS underscore XY Athletic on Twitter. Uh, XX. And also it is, she gave us the truthfits.com is where you can get some of her wear. Please welcome Jennifer Say. Welcome back. Hi, Drew. Thanks for having me. Of course. Glad so to be here. I, I, before we launch into the, the product line, I, I, I want to know how you've been thinking lately about the topic of school closure. I, I feel like since we last spoke, you could still get canceled for saying the government was wrong for closing schools. Now it is not just abundantly clear, it is grotesquely clear. It's disgusting what they did to kids, particularly in states like mine. Uh, how are you feeling? How is the war? How's the fight going? T tell me some more. Well, your current state is my former state for 32 years. I left in 2021 so that my younger children could actually attend in-person school. Um, I had a son who was halfway through kindergarten and had never met his classmates or his teacher. And that's not what I wanted his first um, experience of school to be. You know, I want him to be excited about learning. Um, I'm not feeling great, Drew. I mean, you know, the headlines are everywhere. The New York Times is talking about the startling learning loss. Um, CNN is talking about it. New York Times, they don't acknowledge, of course, that they contributed to prolonged school closures by doing nothing but fear mongering about children as super spreaders. And so everybody seems to be trying to kind of memory hole that they had anything to do with it. It was oh patently obvious. We didn't it know. How did we know? We didn't we, know. We, how did Jennifer I, say no? How did I know? How did, she knew. How did I know? I'm not a yeah. doctor, and I knew. I have children in public school. It was obvious. These are the most vulnerable children, not mine. My children are, you know, have every advantage. Yeah. But I know their classmates. I know the population in the public schools. And just the mere fact that the private schools were all open and the public schools were closed with such glaring hypocrisy that I just couldn't abide it. And, you know, honestly, it didn't take me a second to know that this was problematic. I was outspoken from mm. day one, March 13th, 2020, mm. which, as you can imagine, in San Francisco was not, mm. um, you know, a, a popular opinion to have. And so, you know, my neighbors, the citizens of San Francisco came for both me and my husband, but we persisted. I attended school board meetings. I led rallies starting in the fall. But the schools in California, that was the state closed the longest, 19 months of school closures in California. I Ho I, I know you'll not get an apology from any of these. I, I, I got to hold my tongue. You'll not, you'll not get apologies from any of these citizens. Uh, but how the many do you members. think, how many do you think understand how grotesquely out of line they were and how wrong they were? Have they confronted that yet? No, I, I actually don't believe that most people, well, here's what I'll say. I think there is a very passionate minority who still insists that they were right and that any amount of harm done to children was worth it because they still believe it saved lives, which it did nothing of the sort. It didn't slow the spread. There's plenty of data on this. Um, and they're so, their identity has become so wrapped up in, you know, COVID fearfulness, COVID cautiousness, and not making them a good person because they care about other people. And they can't see the harm that was done. But I do think there's a significant uh, percentage of the population that sort of, you know, stood by quietly, didn't necessarily, you know, shame their neighbors. And they're starting to kind of realize that maybe they made a mistake. But the general, I think, vibe in the media is, 
well, we may have been wrong, but it was for the right reasons. And you may have been right, but it was for the wrong reasons. So you're still a terrible oh. person. Wow. I mean, that's what, wow. I mean, what I hear, a twist. I mean, I hear it repeatedly. I mean, I heard Dr. Scott Galloway. I don't know if you know who that is. He does a podcast with Kara Swisher. That's basically his view. He said it on Bill Maher a couple months ago. She sort of said the same thing this past weekend on Bill Maher. Um, no. The right reasons. I have no problem yeah. saying that. And you were wrong for the wrong reasons. And it was total myopia. And um, you it. It just, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I can read the data yeah. and I understood from the outset that children were at little to no risk. And I yes. understood that being out of school was going to be incredibly harmful in myriad ways. And that's exactly what happened. Yes. Literally a thousand fold less risk, a thousand fold. And in, in countries like Sweden, where they kept the schools open, there were no deaths. And there was no difference in the teacher population relative right. to the women that and women and men of that same That's age right. uh, across the country. In other professions, uh, yeah. In other Sweden, professions. that terrible right. right wing country, that horrible yeah, right wing. The, the, yeah, they they must Sweden. be MAGA. They must be <laughs> Trump supporters, I guess. But <laughs> but you know, and I I could I can um, I can really I can forgive people for being wrong. But for destroying and canceling people whom they disagree with, that's where they, it needs to be some sort of, I, agree. I don't mean a settling of a score or a reckoning, but I, I'd like to see some real apologies for the behavior because the, 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 the harming of other people who are right. And now, by the way, interested in silencing the free speech of people like Jennifer, should there ever be something else where she needs to speak out? This is this is reprehensible. This is we ha we well, all must do something about this. And if we don't have a degree of introspection, it'll just happen again. The same people are in control. Randy Weingarten is still in charge of the teachers union. Um, I guess we have a different, you know, leader of the CDC, but similar mindset. You know, we Gavin Newsom is still the governor. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer is still the governor. You know, all the states that were closed the longest that vilified people like me, um, the same people are still in charge. And there's been absolutely no introspection about it. And so mm. they'll do it again. I mean, you were just talking with your earlier guest about, you know, future pandemics that have already been sort of pre-identified. <laughs> so without yep, a right. sort of... Um, you know, you're calling it settling the score, but I would just say a kind of what went wrong, which you do in business all the time. And I know we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but you know, if you, if you, if you do a new product launch and it doesn't go well, you do a deep dive into what went wrong. Well, we're not mm -hmm. doing that because people are protecting their reputations. But the other thing that's happening, and I'm sure you've observed this is everybody's doing this. I didn't do it. I didn't close the schools. Yeah. I, he did it. Yeah. He told me to do it. It's like, oh, right. I, I can't. It, I'd almost wish I, I almost wish I'd been wrong because it's so frustrating now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Well, speaking of uh, making sure businesses uh, thrive, uh, talk to us about your new endeavor. Yeah. So just two days ago, I launched my own brand. I never wanted to uh, lead a startup and we can get into kind of what led me there. I was always very happy you know, being a, a leader in an established company. I, I actually really liked that. I was sort of a company person. Um, but I saw a hole in the marketplace. And you have is that, all is that Riley Gaines? Is that Riley is Gaines Riley. one of your models? Oh, that's she so funny. Is. Riley <laughs> is and Paula Scanlon is. And we've got another, a bunch of other truth tellers. Um, we, we wanted to feature people who are brave and, you know, speak inconvenient truths and, and do it anyway, even when slings and arrows are directed their way. Um, but I realized there was a, just a hole in the marketplace. There's all these athletic brands that claim to stand up for women and champion women from Nike to Lululemon to, you know, much smaller brands. And on this particular issue of really championing female athletes and protecting women's sports, not a peep. They don't do anything. And look, I've been a, a, a you know, I have studied and paid attention to Nike my entire career, obviously one of the strongest brands in the world. The disconnect between their Women's History Month campaigns and how they pretend to champion women and how they actually treat real women inside the company, as well as their ambassadors, people like Allison Felix, and I can tell you that story, um, how they treat young athletes in their uh, 
Nike's Oregon running project, which is now shut down for abuse and doping. They drove a young woman who had been the fastest runner, young runner in the world. They, they drove her to the brink of suicide. Mm. Mary Kane. All of these things have been written about. So the hypocrisy, that divide between the image that's presented and the actual disrespect and disregard they treat women with, I think is is reflected around this issue where women's sports are really, um, I think, at risk and endangered because of uh, male bodied, you know, trans identified athletes that are competing in the women's category. Um, so we can, t- I, so I just, you know, I, I, I looked at the situation and I thought, well, I'm a former athlete. We haven't talked about that, but I was an elite gymnast in the eighties. I was the 1986 national champion. I've been very outspoken about the abuse in my sport was the first person to write about it actually in my book in 2008. I obviously have been outspoken on other subjects like kids. And so I'm not afraid of a little, a little controversy. And I've worked for one of the most famous and beloved brands in the world and rebuilt that brand, Levi's. So it's kind of everything I was meant to do. And I just couldn't bear to go back into a corporate environment where I'm constantly being told what I can say and what I can't say and what I'm doing wrong and how I don't understand women and how I talk too fast. I just want to do it my way. I'm 55 years old. I got one more shot at this. I know what I'm doing. And it seems like a lot of people agree with us. We launched two days ago and we've sold several weeks of product in the first two days. So, oh, congratulations. Awesome. That's a good deal. There, yeah. there, is this, there is this world out there of people who want to support brands that support them, you know, that, uh, that they don't feel like the brands hate them, <laughs> which is how it feels to buy brands these days sometimes. Um, so congratulations. You want to say something here? Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I think that that's true. I mean, people often say, they usually say, the vast majority of people say, I want to buy brands that support my values. And there are a ton of people that feel pushed away by, you know, I'll use it as a as a shorthand, but those kind of woke capitalist stances that so many brands are taking. I don't see this as a political position, though, saying that men and women are different. I, <laughs> that shouldn't be a political position. Um, it's just true. It's well, I, I see you more as someone who's really worried about women's sports and what does it mean when we're allowing all this funny, you know, these, when we allow in post-pubertal males that are on estrogens, what does that mean? And, you know, I, this, these are sports oftentimes that won't allow any medication, any hormones, except this, you can take these. And, and so it's very, it's right. a very odd time. And and I worry about women getting hurt, uh, you know, and things well, like that. Well, that's an issue as well. Things. Yeah. Well, uh, even in lower so that, context sports like volleyball and basketball, um, young women, high school students have been hurt. In just the last few months, mm-hmm. there have been coaches that have called games off because so many athletes on the opposing team have been injured. So it's neither safe nor fair. And I think what's really concerning to me is the ideology that underpins allowing for this is that. There is no difference between male and female bodies. And it's well, just patently but, but I, I, But even not going there, just not supporting women who would like support and protection of their discipline, of their, of their competitions. I, to me, to me, it, to me it, feels, it feels so anti-feminine. It like, not anti, I, I don't know what words to use. These are, it gets, gets weird when you try to express yourself, but anti-feminine. Feminist, I guess it would be. It's the opposite yeah. of empowering women per se. Uh, and it, how, what are, are, if you want to get into the language and say, you know, cis females born as females with XY, XX chromosome, they would like some protection and they get none. Uh, and so it gets, it gets, um, very challenging for me. It's very difficult. And, and a lot well, of it is perpetual. It no, is, it is sexist. It is That's sexist, what it feels like to and me. It, yeah. under the guise of inclusion. And not only that, but right. any woman who speaks up, me, Martina Navratilova, you know, Riley Gaines, we're told to sit down and be quiet. So you know, women's empathy and you know is being weaponized against us because I think women generally do want to be kind and inclusive, or we sort of lean that way. And so for sure, way too many women who actually agree with us and this brand are quiet because they don't want to be seen as cruel or mean 
Um, but it's not sure. being a stand-up. I mean, for nobody wants that. Nobody no. wants that. That's the point. That's not the the issue here. It's about how do we navigate these things in a way that are fair That's and, right. and, uh, safe. and yeah, and and safe exactly. And and like as I was saying, so much of this is medically managed, and and I worry about my pro- profession harming people inadvertently in mm-hmm. all kinds of ways. So. Well, uh, t- tell them briefly the story in the book about uh, Levi's Unbutton, how, how that happened to you. Yeah, I mean, it's really a, a book about my entire career. So if you if anybody's interested and you want to read it, you can actually get it on the um, on our website, thetruthfits.com. We're selling it as part of the assortment. I mean, it really is my entire career. It's not just my time at Levi's, though I did spend 23 years there. And look, I think it's an amazing brand. I'm so grateful for what I learned there. Um, and, you know, I, I did, I ended up, I ended up resigning. That's a, a very small part of the book, though. It really is about my entire career and kind of coming to terms with the fact, look, do I'm a lifelong lefty. And what I experienced, or I was up until 2020, what I experienced during 2020 and COVID was such a trespass of what I thought the left's values to be, their stated values, you know, protecting the little guys, standing up for kids, standing up for the vulnerable, protecting a little guy from big corporate interests. All those things were cast aside during COVID. And so it really is kind of, I guess you could call it my red pilling <laughs> and, and realizing yeah. that this was not... Um, a party I wanted to be part of. And and I, I dive into woke capitalism and how, you know, corporate leaders have really taken these woke stances to kind of wrap themselves in virtue to avoid any scrutiny. I mean, Sam Bankman Freed, I think is the most obvious example, right? He furthered this idea of effective altruism. It was obviously a scam. How many years is he spending in prison now? But everybody ate it up with a spoon, including journalists, and no one interrogated his terrible, obviously illegal business practices. Two days before he was arrested, he was on stage with Andrew Ross Sorkin at the New York Times uh, Deal Book Summit, and he was fawning all over him. I mean, what is going on? The journalists have completely abdicated their duty. And I think during COVID, that was, you know, I hold a special sort of disdain for how journalists really failed, science journalists in particular, really failed to interrogate the issues here. No, that, that I, I'm sort of, I've always been kind of independent, but I've been, I've been registered Democrat before I've leaned left. And the, the way things went down was, and a big part of that was truth to authority, right? You, you, you go after and challenge authority. You don't right. toe their line all the time. And when, that's bizarre to me. And, um, you know, but this, I, I have to, I, you know, I'm, I'm not strictly speaking a conservative um, and this recent, attempt at the the I, i'm not even sure what they're doing in front of the supreme court right now with this ab- another abortion case but it reminded me when i used to have to fight against the right really hard against uh mm-hmm. i was bringing the the gardasil vaccine in for for i was worried about hpv and cervical cancer and i know that's a mm-hmm. controversial issue and there are people that have concerns about that i know but i was very very it, it, most most the attack came from the right back in those days uh, and yeah. then I morning after pill. Here's the thing about morning after pill. I think they're assailing the morning after pill in in uh, the um, Supreme Court. And what drives me insane is the morning after pill works by suppressing ovulation. That's how it works. That's how your birth control pill takes that you take every day. Same mechanism. Any hormone can interfere with implantation. So are we going to get rid of all hormonal contraceptives? And oh, by the way, IUDs specifically work by preventing implantation and no one ever brings IUDs up in this conversation. So to me, it seems disingenuous unless you're going to get rid of all of it. If you really want to go there, well, at least that's philosophically consistent. So again, that was all stuff I was fighting back in the day. And uh, now it's, this is far worse. I assure you. Yeah. I mean, the madness on the left, it's like, you have to fall in line with every. You have to fall in line with every sort of, you know, tenet of the platform. And when it came to COVID, the 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 key tenet was stay home forever. Don't mind it. Brag about it. You're caring and giving if you're willing to do this and lock your kids in their room. Um, and I was having nothing to do with it. So I guess that 
you know, if I'm a conservative now, I guess I'm a, people used to say that to me as if it was like this insult. Now I'm like, okay, fine. If the conservatives believe in free speech (laughs) and think closed public schools are bad, then call me a conservative. I don't even care anymore. (laughs) I I mean, mostly I I just I feel exactly the same way. Yeah. I believe in the truth. I believe in keeping children safe. I believe in free speech, absolute free speech. And that is my greatest concern these days. That seems to be under massive assault. So uh, I I have absolute categorical, um, uh, it is my privilege to defend your right to bring up new clothing and to bring up the issues you want to defend. I mean, that is just, I, I, I feel that with, with every piece of my being. So uh, let's get behind Jennifer Say's group. I love and mother power. Mother power needs to be more. Let's get behind. Now you said it is the, the truth fits.com is where you can buy the clothing. Is that correct? That is correct. Go check it out. We've got a first, this first delivery is basically cotton products, t-shirts, graphic tees, joggers, sweatshirts, Very soon we have performance product coming in. So that's things like leggings and bike shorts and all the stuff you want to work out in. So there's a lot more coming. Um, Stay with us, sign up for the email and and you'll get updates on it. But yeah, the sales have been crazy. The support has been amazing. That's great. It's good for you. I hope you send something to Drew because I want him to wear it for V-Shred. Okay, I'll wear it. I'll wear it. And 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 it's men's and women's. uh, I want to be clear. It's men and women clothing, right? Yes, it's men's and women's. You'll get that girl dad shirt. You have a daughter, I believe, Drew. Is that correct? Oh, you do good. Have one, one. Yes, I do. Yeah, yes, you'll I do. get that one, and I'll send oh. here. I'll show. I'll send this one. <laughs> we are getting that one, and I love you too. It. That's a good Susan. one. Yeah. So thank you. We will put. Yeah, you got it. I'm sorry it didn't get there in time, but it's on the way. Don't worry. I, I'm sorry because I would have been wearing it right now. But uh, Jennifer, <laughs> th- thank you for coming back, and thank you for fighting the good fight. And uh, we'll talk soon. Back at you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Joe. All right. You bet. You got it. Um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, nonsense in the restream here saying that there's no such word as cis because I use that word. Let me just say two things. This is where we speak our mind, everybody. Uh, Thank you for bringing it up. A, I said specifically, I want to use language that's being used. So I want to use a language that I'm happy to pay respect to uh, all sides. But people that say cis doesn't exist, you're wrong. Cis and trans are terms from organic chemistry. A a cis molecule, but write up a a cis ethanol molecule or something, or or, uh, what would be a good one? But put up a cis molecule and a trans molecule, uh, like methanol or something. Well, that's not going to work either. Um, Put it up there, Caleb, and just just look up quick an image for a cis molecule and a trans molecule. Trans means you have two things on either side of the molecule. Cis means it's on the same side of the molecule. Uh, that's all it means. That's where it came from. It came from organic chemistry. One is the same, the other is across. So the across was what the trans was was uh, tends to refer to. Nothing comes up, Caleb? That's, that's sort of surprise. All right, good. Sorry to, to do that. <laughs> like, faster, faster. Um, people are... Greg says, the sl- no, it's just language, everybody. Just relax. Uh, and, <laughs> and I, but I'll tell you what, though, when we been, get to our after show, you get, what's it's that? It could have been something that's hijacked. I think it's, you know, it's a real scientific term and it's being hijacked by other people and turned into something else. Yeah, that's why I don't, uh, but whatever, but the point, I, I understand yeah, what the yeah, but the piece is, the point is it exists. There you go. There's cis and there's trans. You see, uh, the the cis, the the uh, CH three is on the same side of the molecule, and the trans is on the opposite side of the molecule. And there you go. That's it. That is cis A and trans in organic chemistry. And I'm guessing they hijacked those. That you know that language. I don't care. I, I really don't care about language. Uh, and so I. Uh, We're old. Yeah, is that your brother on the on the uh, on the uh, Rebel Rants? There's an L sailor there uh, who identifies as a human. Uh, Very well could be. Lee, you know? I, I'm glad you identify as a, as a human if that's you. Uh, I have a brother named Lee Sailor. Uh, but uh, I just want to say that we, if we, if we do, when we do start this after show thing, that's when we will go have at it a little bit, everybody. You can speak your minds as gloriously as you want and as aggressively as you want. And I'll probably respond as aggressively as I want because that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to get get. I'm at a it. she, her, and since testosterone replacement, bro. She, her, bro. Yeah. Okay, so bro, so you're you're part part trans, I, yeah. half trans by the testosterone replacement for your uh, hormone replacement therapies. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> so let's get into tomorrow, if you don't mind. Uh, let's see, today's Wednesday, Thursday. Tomorrow, what we got up? Let's get through the rest of the schedule. And we have Gene Amphlete on Monday. We have Robert Barnes on Tuesday. Ed Dow with Kelly on Wednesday. Drea DeMatteo in the studio. I saw Caleb doing a few of the cross-the-table views of our new cameras and lighting. Uh, she will be here in the studio with me. So that's going to be fun. Jack Prasabic is on the schedule. I don't know if you just caught that. There we go. That's going to be, let's see, is that this? Yes. So she'll be sitting right under that camera right there. And uh, I have She's very experience. excited. Oh, good. She well, was watching the show and she said that you really are, she loves the way that you're fighting for freedom and she's very excited. Well, she's now. very much a free speech person. First, she was worried about it. She was like, I am a little rough around the edges. I said, <laughs> we love expletives. She goes, okay. She, she, Rough around the edges is this is what we want to we want to um, develop here. We want to want to uh, cultivate an environment of free expression. That, that's what I like. Now I understand that we have to be realistic in this environment. I would say you know, I, I, there's things I can't say as a physician, for instance. I, they're just they're realistic constraints on language, and I think it's important that we respect the real. Like we can't yell fire in a crowded theater, all the classic stuff, but. In our own private Idaho, which I plan to create in the post show, the walking, talking dead part of our show, we're, we're going to mix it up. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to sign up at locals to get that one. What's up, Susan Pinsky? Your picture's up. You want to say something? What I do? I don't know. Oh, she, she was, was, she uh, was talking. You're getting ready to say something. <laughs> she okay. was talking. All right. <laughs> I was. I yeah. One day I'll be on camera when I oh. do my hair and makeup. And Vivek Ramaswamy coming in on April 9th. I see. So with uh, getting him back in here, I I really thought he would be Trump's vice presidential can. Uh, partner we'll we'll okay. see Wait, and we know uh, that rfk yet? jr no he hasn't rfk jr announced his she's an interesting person a, a patent lawyer um been in silicon valley for a long time i i'll be interested to hear his reasoning and what he wants her to do and stuff i i just like the way rfk mixes things up so i'm gonna trust and and my f bet that he had some very distinct reasons for bringing her well of course he did and I we'll see what those are and let's us three, maybe four people up on stage at his vice president announcement event who have all been recent guests on this show. Jade Bhattacharya. Oh, no Del kidding. Big Tree. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was watching it and I was yeah. pretty much expecting, I don't know if they did or not, but I, it was like any moment they were going to put up a clip from his interview on the show because they used a bunch we of We got them. invited yeah. too. We just couldn't yeah. go. Oh, we yeah. were invited to that? Yes, oh, we were. were. What? I didn't even know. I'm sorry. Yeah. We couldn't Where go. It? Where was it? Why couldn't we go? It was in um, Oakland, I do oh, yeah. believe. Oh, we should have. And we were, we we've had, been, we've been busy. yeah, he, we had a show and all that. But um, yeah, we have great guests coming up. But I just also want to make a shout party. out to uh, our new lighting yeah. system by Nanlight. And I'm not going to, I am I just cannot tell you how happy I am Susan with these has, lights and the new backdrops. Yeah, and Susan we have a working full, very hard on this to benefit everybody and also to bring people into the studio so we can do more stuff in here with uh, live guests and whatnot. And, yeah, because uh, during the pandemic, the dogs decided that their little peepee -pee spot was right under the guest chair. Yeah. So we had to rip all the carpet out and we put in uh, a new wall and we painted yeah. and we put up the lights and um, we had a professional come in and it just looked so good. I, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I am so happy to come to work every day. And, <laughs> and the lighting has been a key part of this. And then we thank Nanlight for that. Yeah, we want everybody um, who's interested in lighting to uh, look up nanlight.com. It's N-A-N-L-I-T-E.com. So if, if, look, we, we really are enthusiastic about the people that support us here. The guys that brought us the blue mics. This is an incredible, we tested all these mics. We found this one. That's why it's sort of weirdly positioned here. It's it's for the sound. It's so you get the good sound. And we are the, the Nan lights. And when we talk about the wellness company and the and I literally put the travel kit together with them. And when it's the um uh true niogen, I've been taking true niogen for 10 years and I up my dose lately because I've been convinced the science is even better than I thought. And there is all the folks that support us and we appreciate you supporting them. So there we go. We will see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Drea will be in the studio with us. Should be a lot of fun. Be here. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. 
If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. The parallel economy has empowered us to care for our health, well-being, as well as longevity. Likewise, for us pet parents who now have a place to go when it comes to keeping the family dogs, cats, even horses in the best shape possible. As a dog dad, I'm thrilled to be working with Pet Club 24-7, a company founded by two guys who lost dogs to serious conditions, including cancer. Pet Club 24-7 has an incredible array of products, including a line of supplements for humans, such as the Inforce Plus Corollius Versicolor and Inforce Corollius Versicolor with Reishi. My friend and colleague, Christina Ferrari, a cancer survivor herself, swears by it. When I was diagnosed, the doctor in the emergency room told me, you have two years to live. Oh, boy. Along with the stem cell, I took these. I have been in remission for eight years now. For dogs, mush puppy treats are a fan favorite. Rex, oh, boy. <laughs> he came right. Oh, there he is. They are also made with the Coriolis Versicolor Mushroom, which supports their immune system, according to hundreds of clinical studies. Here's Kristen Ludlow, National Vice President. That strain does matter. We do have the most potent strain, and we also extract it in a proprietary way. And that's why we've been having such wonderful experiences with these products. Mush puppies are made here in the U.S. There are no fillers. It's not addicting. Your dog can't accidentally overdose. Go to drdrew.com slash pet club 24-7 for a discount off the list price. That is drdrew.com. P-E-T-C-L-U-B-247, Pet Club 247.